Hi, this is Tim, and today we're going to go through how forces work in a PLC, both input and output forces, because they operate a little differently. We're using our basic MicroLogix 1100 trainer, and it still has the program in it from our CLN video. I'll put a link to it in the description. Also, I'll put a link to all of our lessons where you can find how to upload, download, write basic programs and everything. But we're going to start off in this basic seal in program and in it the start button turns on the green light and the stop button turns off the green light. I'm not going to go through how it works because we have a video on that but I do want to go through how forces work in this PLC. So a few things. First you have this forces enabled and in a MicroLogix PLC the forces are always enabled. So they are always armed and ready to go. And there are two ways that you can force a bit in the PLC. So we're going to start with the green button. We're going to right click it. And you can see here at the bottom we have force on or force off. And we're going to select force off. In RS Logic, you can see now we have forces installed. And what that means is there is a force active in the PLC. Also, right on the front of the PLC, we can see here the force light is now illuminated. Those are two important things to look for to realize that forces are installed in a PLC. So now we're going to right click this again and we're going to remove this force. Now I'm going to right click the green button again and I'm going to force it on. Our green light came on, both the OTE here and the physical light. Now we're going to remove this force on the green button. Our green light stayed on because we had the ceiling rung. For now, I'm just going to hit the red button just to turn that green light back off because now I want to show you how it will work when you force the output on. So we're going to do it differently this time. Over here on your left pane, if you, below the data files, you have your force files. And if we double click this output force file, we can see that we have a bunch of dots in it. Now, if you have a dot in the force file, it means that there's no force present on that bit. So right now, output zero has no force present. If I type a one right here and hit enter, you can see our green light comes on. But there's something very obviously strange about this compared to the input. When we forced our input on, we got a green indicator noting that that instruction was true. But now that we have forced our green light on, we're not getting a green indicator. And also you can see on this seal in, it is not sealing in. If we type a dot back here, that's going to remove this force. But unlike when we had our input forced on where the force was actually evaluated by the program, an output is not evaluated by the program if it's forced on. It is evaluated as it was in the program. Here it is our scan cycle from our scan cycle video. And what I've done is I've added where the forces are actually applied at. So same as always, a PLC reads its inputs, then it updates its data tables, executes its program, then it updates its outputs based off of the output data tables. Then it goes around, does a little bit of overhead, then it repeats the cycle again. The input forces are applied in between where it read its physical inputs and where it scans its program. So if you have a forced input, it affects the data table box in your PLC. Whereas an output force is applied in between the end of the PLC scan and when it updates its output. And that's what I love about using the CLIM program to explain the difference between an input force and an output force. One, because it's a really short program, but it really emphasizes the difference between the two. So if we right click again the green button and force it on, and then we go through our program scan, the XIC is going to go look for a one. Where an I colon zero backslash zero. Does it have a one? Yes. Now that data table box is highlighted in red. Now it's going to become more apparent on the output instruction that the value of 1 is the data table value. The highlighted red is telling you that there is also a force applied on that. Now on the inputs it's always going to be the same because it's going to read its physical inputs. 
update its data table, then it's going to apply those forces to the data table. Now we're not going to go through the details of it like we did in the CLN because obviously you can go back to that video and watch it. Now where it gets interesting is what happens when this force is removed compared to what happens to the output force when it's removed. So we're going to right click and we're going to remove the force. Now our OTE stayed sealed in and the reason it did was this lower branch because the lower branch says go look for a one where and o colon zero backslash zero do i have a one yes so it is true then this one says go look for a zero where and i colon zero backslash two do i have a zero yes so it is true so we have continuous path of trues to our ote so it goes and writes a one now we're going to do it forcing an output so we're going to hit the red stop button which takes us back to where we were. And we're gonna right click the OTE and we're gonna force it on. Now again, we get the green light on, same as we did before, but our output force is handled differently in our program, so we do not get the same result. So if we go through our program again, the XIC is gonna go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have one? No, so it is false. It goes to the end of the branch, comes back down, and now it says go look for one. Where? An O colon zero backslash zero. So it goes there and it looks. Now here's where it gets interesting, is an output instruction, the forces are updated after the program scan. So in this program, it is a zero. Now we see the highlight that we have a force on it. And if we right click it, we can display forces. And there we can see that after the program scan, then it is adding this force value to it and then updating its outputs. But in the program itself, this is a zero. So it's evaluated as false. Then the XIO says, go look for a zero. Where? An I colon zero backslash two. We have a zero, so that is true, but we don't have a continuous path of trues from left to right. So this means that this is false. Gets to the end, then it's gonna apply these forces, and that is why the green light is on. Now the difference is the seal end of this. So when we remove the force from O colon zero backslash zero, our green light goes out. Now that can seem like a minor difference, but when you're troubleshooting machines, that can be a major thing, because maybe you're like, you know, if, if this motor would just start, I think everything would be fine. Well, if you force the motor output, your PLC program is not going to be evaluating that motor output as true. But let's say you forced an input that turned the motor on and then all the subsequent logic worked, then you would see it. So it makes a big difference in how the program works. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, let's force this back on. Also, we haven't really forced anything off. We could force off and that just makes it a zero compared to a one. You have forces installed here. If you wanna just remove all forces, you can click right here. You can remove all forces. I know I always say that, you know, there shouldn't be a bunch of rules, you know, funneling you to a specific way of programming, but I will say that when I started programming PLCs, I used a lot of forces, mainly because I didn't understand how a program scan works. So I was just doing whatever I could to get an output to turn on. Realistically, this program right here, applying forces, maybe be the first time I've used a force in years. Uh, so I'm not saying that forces are bad, but make sure that you're forcing it for a good reason. Make sure it's also a safe situation to force. And I will say, try not to leave forces in PLCs because when I walk up to a machine and I'm troubleshooting, the first thing I see is a force light. I'm like, okay, what has been bypassed? And it just, it throws up a caution. So be cautious with forces. And make sure there's not that you're not making an unsafe situation by applying a force. But the big takeaway is make sure you understand the difference between how an input force is applied and an output force is applied. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.